In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to value a European style option using Monte Carlo simulation. And an option is a standardized contract that gives the buyer the right, but not the requirement, to buy or sell a stock at a specified price for a specified amount of time. So in this example, we have a fictitious stock trading at 100. The option can be exercised at $100. So for a call option, if the stock is trading above $100 at expiration, then there will be some value. On the other hand, if the stock is trading below $100, a call option will have no value. But a put option would then have value. The value will be the difference between the strike price and the stock price. So we're going to be estimating a option value for one month period of time. All right, so there's 21 trading days in a month. That represents about 8% of a year, a little bit more than that. We're saying that the risk-free rate is 2.5% and the stock has a historical volatility of 20%. So to value the option, what we need to do is estimate where the stock will end. So using a derivation of the Black-Scholes model, we will estimate an ending value for the stock. So I'll start with the stock price and I'll multiply that by an exponent and it's going to be the risk-free rate less half of the stock variance so the volatility squared we're going to multiply that by the fraction of a year time and then we're going to add to that the standard deviation times the square root of time and then multiply all that by a normal random variate so one possible ending price 21 days from now is that this stock currently trading at 100 will be trading at 98.92. Now if this is the case, then the call option will expire worthless, but the put option will be worth a little bit more than a dollar. So it will make sort of a bookkeeping column here to keep track of the value. And it's going to be the maximum of zero or the ending price less the strike price. Okay, so this is a volatile formula. Every time I do a calculation in the sheet, I'm going to get a different ending price and then a different value. Okay, so we'll do something similar for the put. Again, it's the max of zero, all right, and this time it's the strike less the ending price of the stock. Okay, so in this scenario, the stock ends at $100.35, the call is worth $35, and the put expires worthless. Okay, the question is, how likely is the stock to end at any of these estimated ending price? And the answer is, not likely at all. So since we don't know exactly where the stock is going to end, what we'll do is simulate many different possible ending values and from that, we'll be able to characterize where the stock is likely to end and then what an ending value for both the call and the put will likely be. So once I have one iteration of this completed, all I need to do is copy it down. And so if you scroll down to the bottom of this spreadsheet and you'll be able to download this from a link in the video, you'll see that I estimated 5,000 possible ending values for the stock and then estimated ending values for both calls and puts. All right, with that done, what we do is take the average ending value for a call or a put, and these are future values, so what we need to do is discount them back to the present value. So to discount the future value back to the present value, what I'm going to do is take an exponent of the negative risk-free rate times the fraction of the year times the average ending value in that call column. Okay, so in this simulation we see that the call should be worth $2.36. If I run another simulation by generating 5,000 new ending values, we see it's 244 and 242. 236 again. So somewhere between about $2.30 and maybe $2.45. All right, we'll do the same thing for the put. So we'll take an exponent of the negative risk free rate times the fraction of the year times the average ending value for uh, the put. Okay, so we can see that in this simulation, uh, the put's going to be worth a little bit less than the call. And if I run a few more, we'll see that that's pretty consistent. The reason for that is because, uh, first of all, the 
the stock is trading at exactly the strike. That doesn't happen very often. And then we have this risk-free rate, which is causing the price of the stock, the ending price, to sort of drift upward. All right, so it makes the put just a little less valuable than the call. Okay, so that's a European style option, which as I mentioned, can only be exercised at the expiration date. All right, so all we need to do for that is to estimate the ending price or a possible ending price for the stock. For American style or Bermudian style options, it's a little bit more difficult because those can be exercised at any point. So not only do we have to estimate an ending price, we have to estimate an ending price for each day. And that's what I've sort of set up here is a table that estimates ending prices going out those 21 days. And I did that 5,000 times to estimate 5,000 possible paths that stock may take. Now, once that's all done, we need to figure out, well, what's the optimal time to exercise the option? What's the highest or lowest price the stock is, depending on if it's a call or a put? And to do that, we use polynomial linear regression on each one of these paths. Now, that's something that's a little bit more complex and something that we're not going to do in a simple spreadsheet like this. So I hope that helps with valuing options using Monte Carlo simulation.